Well, we've got a marathon of work going on here. We're now on revision 18 of, I don't know how many, but we're just gonna work our way through these worksheets. And well done for those that are sticking with this, because you will get the reward, you get what you deserve. So well done, you guys. So in this one, we're looking at angles in polygons. Those little things mean that they're 90 degrees. That looks like it's 160, I need to get my eyes tested. That's X, and that's 115 degrees. And whilst we're at it, let's just draw this shape here. And does anyone know what this shape is? It's a regular, because it's all the same. Um, it is five-sided, so it's a pentagon. Okay. What we need to work out is that angle there. This is angles in polygons. And you need to know what all the angles, the total angles in a polygon add up to. And one way to do that, one way, is to choose a point and then draw a line to all the other points you can connect to. And realize you have one, two, three triangles. And each triangle, you remember, multiplied makes 180 degrees. So if I times that, I get 540 degrees. So in this pentagon, all the angles add up to 540 degrees. And I simply then do, right, well, 540, and I take away the sum of all of these. So that's the 90 plus the 90 plus 160 plus 115. And so I just add all those together. So it's the 90 plus the 90 plus 160 plus 115. That equals 455. So I then say, well, 540 minus my answer equals 85 degrees. And there we go. Now, that's one way of answering that. And this question here, it's nice. We've got a regular shape. So this was interior angles, okay? This is interior angles. And that's a nice way to understand how to do interior angles. It's the same number of sides, so the same number of interior angles, but actually I'm gonna show a different way of working this out by looking at what we call the exterior angles. If I to extend these lines, it's like a spoke of a wheel, and if you whiz them round and round and round, round you'll realize that actually all these angles would form a circle that go round. So I know that actually these five angles, these five exterior angles, added together would make 360. So I know that all of those would be 360, meaning that a single angle, just that one there, that angle there would be 360 divided by uh, five, which comes out 72 degrees. And if that's 72 degrees, again, angles on a straight line, it's 180 minus the 72, is 108 degrees so the interior angle of a regular pentagon would be 108 degrees so that's how you do those ones and now we're going on to pythag and trigonometry now these are quite tough questions um, and because of that you get a lot of points and it's worth understanding how to do some of these so we need to remember two things with pythag and trig the first with pythag is that you've got the longest side, let's call it C, the area of that is equal to the two shorter side areas added together. Okay? So that's my hypotenuse, it's my longest side, and these are my shorter sides. In this case, it's 15 and 8. And the question says that you've got this triangle, A, B, C, and it says that A, C, so it's telling you the information is 8, BC is 15, calculate AB. Now we know it's the longest side, so the way I do this is I don't fill the formula in, I literally just say, right, that squared is 64, use your calculator if you need to, that squared is 225, use your calculator if you need to, and because I'm looking for a longer side, I don't take away, I add. I add those two, that makes the longer side. So if I add the area, I get 289. So this area is 289. Then I need to introduce to you the square root button. And in this case, that's that button there. And I write 289 in it. Okay? And so that means the side is 17. So AB equals 17. Now, 
we're going to go to the one with the tree, the question with the tree. So let's draw a little tree so I can get this thing to open up. Sometimes they don't. There we go. Here's my, it looks like an oak tree, as if I really know what an oak tree looks like. But it does look like an oak tree. There we go. And what are we told? Right, we're told that the distance across there is 18. And we're told that that distance there is 20. And they want the height there. So similar to this question, except this time you'll notice something slightly different. Okay. We know that it's a right angle, because it tells us there in the picture. And we know that distance is 18. So I'm going to square that, square that. So again, use my calculator and do 18 squared. You can see how I do that. Put it into a square. Do 20 squared. You can see how I do that. Now this time, I'm looking for a shorter side. So I'm going to do that minus that. So that means the squared area here is 76. The squared area is 76. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, square root button. My answer equals, and it gives me in what we call third form. Okay, and I don't want third form, so I'm going to press the S to D, and it's 8.7, and it wants it to one, correct to one decimal place. So 8.7 meters. That's what my X equals, 8.7. And then we get to the trig questions. And this one, you need to know so. Let's just do it in different colors. Ka and toa. Okay. So they're the three things you need to know. And let's just get the question up. Here we go. And it only works with right angles. You need right angles. They say that's 12, that's 13, and they want the angle now here, B, A, C. B, A, C means they want that angle there. Call it X. So they want us to work out that. So the way I have to do this, I have to decide. First of all, I have to label. So it's a label of sides. Now, how do I do that? Well, I know that always points to the hypotenuse. Call that the hypotenuse. This always is opposite the angle. So that's O, and I don't have this one, and I don't need it, so I'm not going to do anything about it. Now I have to say, which one of these three has O and H in it? And you can see it is that one there. So what I now do is I've labelled, and then I'm going to copy that out again and point at what I'm wanting. I want the angle. So I point at that, that's what I want. Now I write out the equation. The sine of the angle, because it's all to do with that, that sine that's cosine and that's tan. The sine of the angle equals O over H, which in this case is the opposite 12 over 13. So now, fun bit on the calculator. I've got an attachment of sine. Okay, if you look carefully at your calculator, you can see the sine, and then just above it, you can see the little yellow. That's the way of undoing the sine. Okay, it's called arc or shift or inverse. I've got shift here, so I'm going to write it as shift sign open bracket 12 over 13. So let's show how I do that. So I do shift sign, I get a bracket and it's fraction, so I do my fraction. And I do 12 over 13. Make the arrow flash big there, close the bracket and equals. Now you've got to make sure that your little D is on the display there for degrees, otherwise it can go wrong for you. And it says 67.38. So I'm going to say 67.4 degrees. That's what we call, and that would be called the angle of elevation. If they asked you, it goes from the horizontal up. So it's called the angle of elevation. Then we get to our final question. So let's just squeeze that in time and see if we can do it right angle triangle and it tells us oh, I can't even see that angle there it's so titchy isn't it um, I know that's 14 and uh, it says that that's R S T and what they want is they want the um, I'm going to try and see if I can see it on the screen here because it's so small 53 get glasses Simon 
So that's 53 degrees. Now, again, label. So I'm going to label everything. That points at the hypotenuse. I haven't got anything, so I'm not going to write anything there. That is pointing to the opposite. And they actually want RT. This is the angle they want. So that would be known as the adjacent. Which of these ones has O and A in it? And if you look carefully, you can see that it's this fella here. So write that out. Point at what you want. I want the adjacent. I'm pointing at that. So that means A equals O over tan 53, because that's the angle there. And I know that O represents 14. So all I do is put that on my calculator. So there we go. So on my calculator, clear that. I write fraction button 14 over tan 53, big flashy arrow. Oh, syntax error because I didn't close the bracket. Okay, so that's a reminder for me. So it's 14 over, and I do need to close that. So 54, close the bracket, big flash equals 10.5. So I know that length is 10.5. And yeah, they haven't said to what degree of accuracy, but that should be pretty good. So there you go, that's how you do those.